today because as always we have gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ glory be to God he is alive he lives we've been going over that great topic of once saved always saved is it a biblical principle and we spent all last week been working on this week and probably next week as well. Uh, we probably won't be having Sunday services this week. I, I got a lot of things going, my, helping my sister move. I am got a little job to do back in Denver. So next week, may seem like I'm on vacation, but I'm not on vacation. <laughs> I'm working and trying to gather together some funds to be able to do some much needed maintenance projects here around the church. And you're the only people, and when I say people, it's only four of us, uh, contributing to all of the maintenance needs of a church, um, it can turn into a bear. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a great responsibility. And I wake up every morning praying and thanking God that he would allow me to live here and to be here and to be a steward of this great place. I, I am so thankful to be here. I love living in the church. And uh, of course, I don't live right here in the sanctuary, but there are living spaces here. And living here at the church and waking up every day and, and being in the church, I mean, I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it, and I've never felt more at home than I feel here at the church. And so I thank God. I thank God for that. That being said, you know, last couple of days, oh, I've been sick, and, and I don't know if I'm sick. I don't know what I got. Uh, I feel absolutely exhausted today. I, I feel utterly tired and, and I'm not sure if, you know, I, I got diabetes or whatnot. We don't have any doctors in this community, so it's difficult to find a doctor. Uh, and then when you have no income and you're on, you know, government insurance, it's even more difficult to find doctors. They will set up an appointment for you, but to actually invest some time into your care, or your well-being is very difficult to, to find. The modern day medical services in the United States has nothing to do with the taking care of and the well-being of the American citizens. It's 100% a, a job of prestige and personal gain. <laughs> they, they only care about their paycheck. They don't care about nothing else. And that's the only thing they have surrendered to is the gain that comes from being paid on Friday. And outside of that, you know, they won't put forth one ounce of effort 
initiative, care, anything. They, they do not go the extra mile to help anyone out. It's purely, what do I have to do to get paid today? And that's very unfortunate because uh, there's so many people in the United States suffering right now and, and the whole world trying to take advantage of the American citizens financially. You know, we if there if there's one country on earth that is as far from freedom as it can get it is the American people. And people say all the time, you know, and we talk in a biblical sense, you know, that oh, all salvation is determined upon the will of man. The will of man. It, it, you, you have no ability to access salvation outside of your own will. And I, I think that's a very much a deception we, 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 as even American citizens, do not have free will. We do not have freedom. There's no such thing as freedom here. If we had a sense of freedom, there would be no taxation. We wouldn't be paying taxes and, and things, and, and the tax money that we did pay in would be used for the protection and the well-being of the citizens paying into it. That's usually... That's where taxes and all that came about and what it was designed for was the protection of the citizens that were being taxed. Now we, we are slaves to Europe, we're slaves to the world. <laughs> and the last people who benefit from the taxation of American citizens are American people. <laughs> we, we are being taxed without representation. You know, do we have any representation in Ukraine? No. No, we don't. But Ukraine collects all the tax money, you know. And so I haven't been feeling well. And, and I feel <laughs> like my hope is in Jesus Christ. My hope is in God. You know, I, I like I say, I'm exhausted. I, I wake up every morning at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, witching hour. And, and never it used to be like that till I came into this community. And uh, I don't know. I, I wake up to pray and to pray against the dark forces and evil that's going on in these communities. Uh, always praying. I wake up every morning being quite thankful for this place and being allowed to live in such a wonderful place. I love being here. Uh, 2021, you know, I had a heart attack and since then I've been, I've been sick. I've not recovered at all. I've been sick ever since and I feel horrible. I can get about a half day's worth of work and then I run out of gas uh, uh, completely. I gotta you know, recuperate, take a nap, and then I can continue on for a while after that. But I tell you, man, when I go to sleep, it, it is literally, and I don't know what happens. Maybe I stop breathing in, in my sleep, but, uh, it is literally like, in order to wake up and come out of that nap, I, I, I gotta pry the nails off the coffin. <laughs> I gotta pry the nails off the coffin and, and then I gotta dig my way out of the grave. And, and that's how I feel when I wake up, literally like coming out of a grave, out of the coffin and I never feel better, I always feel worse. And it takes me a good hour or so to, to recuperate from, from the nap, to, to, you know, 
and then I've been in, in utter pain. My, my body is aching everywhere. I got my legs hurt, my ankle hurts, and I don't know what happened. I think the, the cartilage in my ankle bone or something is worn out. And, and so the bone in my ankle, and it's the inside of my ankle, it, it just hurts and, and will not heal. And it's been going on for, you know, a year. Uh, I got some kind of arthritis in, in my left toes. And, and so my toes hurt, and my foot hurts, my ankle hurts, my legs hurt, my arms hurt, like I can't even hardly, and, and I don't know, I do anything. My arms hurt. Uh, I got this weird tingle on, on the back of my neck where it feels like, like I swear a bug or something, you know, it tingles so much that there's a bug or something crawling up the back of my neck. And I don't know, I need a, an adjustment or, or what, but uh, there's never nothing there and I'm not sure what that is. And then I, I have a full sense of weight pushing down in the back of my head. Just doesn't never feel right, I never feel good. And, and, and with this weight pushing down, you know, my hips and, and my stomach are hurting. And uh, I don't know. I really feel like I, I'm just falling apart. I'm, I'm getting weaker and weaker every day, all the time. And uh, my weight, you know, that, I, I, I specifically can uh, believe that, that the medicine they had me on for the heart condition, you know, buffed me out, gave me uh, weight, and uh, can't get rid of that weight. You eat better, do push ups and setups and I do not gain strength. You know, it's, it's, I don't know, I cannot make muscle. And, uh, and I certainly don't lose weight. And then my feet and my legs hurt so much that it's hard to, you know, I, I should go for a walk, right? Get some exercise. Well, when you're in pain all the time, it's very hard to, to want to go get exercise or go for a walk or do anything. And that's better in the morning, of course, after a night of staying off my feet and legs. But as the day goes on, it's, it's every single day. And so I'm exhausted from being sick. Just being sick all the time makes you exhausted. Being in pain all the time makes you exhausted. And no, I, I, I don't take pain medicine, even though I woke up the last two nights at two, three o'clock in the morning. I, I, and I'd have been up for an hour or two before that and just finally said, forget it, and, and went and go and take uh, some Advil ibuprofen and uh, and have to wait for that to kind of kick in and then I can lay back down and get a little rest uh, you know I slept in to almost 10 o'clock this morning a little bit and that was you know waking up going to bed wake up and, and still feel exhausted go back lay down and I'm 100% I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted now. I, I want to go back and lay down again. It's like 11 o'clock, and I feel just utterly tired. I feel horrible. And uh, please keep me in your prayers. As I keep you and, and your family in my prayers as well. Why do I tell you these things? I know you don't care. <laughs> but why 
take the time to tell you these things. Well, I, I am, uh, you know, a firm believer in Jesus Christ and believe that Christ has called me to do something special, something important. And, and in that, you know, I, I want you guys to recognize and understand this, that coming to Jesus Christ in faith, and the gospel, there, there is no nothing in there about financial gain or uh, personal gain. The, the, no, faith comes absent uh, of the gain, absent of the personal gain, absent of the money. The, these preachers and teachers out there preaching the name and claim it prosperity message, you know, the Kenneth Copeland's, the Joel Osteen's, uh, Benny Hens, and, and on down the line, you know, the Mike Murdochs, they, one, preach a, a very false and deceptive message because money and possessions of the world are extremely de deceiving. It can never satisfy and so they, they, they pull you down a path that can never be satisfied. It, it will never satisfy your needs. It will never satisfy your desires. It, it will, you'll never find any satisfaction in it. And so it's very deceptive. And when you get down on that path and, and you begin figuring out that you're never going to get the gain you think you're coming. You know, you come to the Lord expecting the blessings of God to be found in better jobs and more money, more possessions, better cars, bigger homes, all these things. And when that stuff doesn't satisfy, you end up walking off going, boy, you know, I was so deceived by the church. And it's not the church, it's these false preachers and teachers who are deceiving you. <clears throat> and I believe that's why so many people have been away from real church and the gathering of believers and believing that coming to church makes you religious. And I can, I can come to God and be a part of God without being religious. And, you know, because they are firm preachers and teachers on the personal gain, the, the money, the possessions, the blessings will not come to you until after you show God you're serious. You, you got to be serious. Your faith has to be true and be proven true. And, and this is how I know how I know God knows you're being serious. Thousand dollars right there in my hand. Put the money in my hand and, and then God will reward you with 90% more money, more stuff. And, and all the while they're just suckering and manipulating people who are struggling in life to, to give them money. And it's all about money, and it's all about the money you give. And, and that being evidence that your faith is real. Well, I see all of that as a bunch of phony baloney bullshit. And uh, for me, faith was made real when I was able to grab hold of Jesus Christ, absent of the money, absent of the acceptance, absent uh, of the friendships and, and the possessions and, and the prosperity. And they had none of that, and, and yet still held tight to faith in Jesus Christ, my love for Jesus Christ. And recognizing and understanding the, the blessings that come from above, that come from God, is the ability to, while you're in the midst of having nothing, you can still be kind. 
you can still show empathy. You, you still have a sense of compassion and sympathy for other people. You, you have the ability, while you have nothing, and all the things of the world have been stripped away from you, you, you have the ability to love, to be gentle, to be generous, to be patient, to display a sense of self-control. Be, be aware of this, that those who love the world, the world and the things of the world, are enemies of God, because these things are not of God. So, so why do people lead you down a path of desiring to obtain the things that are not of God? That should be a red flag and a question right there. Why do they lead you down a path of where, where you can't be satisfied? It's always about personal gain, gain, gaining more. And I'm not saying God wants us to be in a place of poverty. He, he says he's glorified through your faith. When, when you love him with all you got, absent of all this stuff. And yet, you know, God knows what you need. He knows you need clothes. He made the body. He knows you need food. He, he understands how we work. He, he knows what you need. But seek first the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Christ. And all those things un undoubtedly will be added to you. But don't think those things are the blessings of God. The blessing, the true, honest blessing is God is in your presence. That's what makes life beautiful. And so it makes my life beautiful, just having God in my presence. And, and even through the sickness and, and the pains and the sufferings and, and the, the exhaustion, I, I still wake up saying that I thank you, Father, for allowing me to be in this wonderful place because you're here, and because you're here, it's, it's beautiful, and it's what makes life, that's what makes life beautiful. God being here, God being with me. And money doesn't make life beautiful. Having lots of friends doesn't make life beautiful. God in my presence makes life beautiful, and, and I really pray and would hope that you'd find that beauty in God in your life today. God bless you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Your goodness and mercy follow me. Your goodness and mercy follow me. You anoint me with the Spirit. top of my head down to my feet my cup overflows with your love your goodness and mercy follow me your goodness and mercy follow